Kendrick Lamar just went back to back on Drake with 616 in LA. Here's everything you might have missed and every single diss explained. You know what time it is. We are back. Speaking of time, we got to go right to the title. The song is called 616 in LA. Of course, it references Drake's timestamp songs where he usually bars up. But it has like seven, and I'm not even exaggerating, potentially seven meanings. First off, Kendrick talks about God a lot, not only in this verse, but in his music in general. So I looked up 616 Proverbs, and there are six things the Lord hates. What does Drake call himself, and where does he come from? The sixth God. And what does it say here is basically the biggest thing that the Lord hates, a lying tongue. Not only that, but a false witness who pours out lies and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. We're going to get back to this in just a minute. Not only that, when you look up Corinthians 6.16, he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her, for as it is written, the two will become one flesh. Who is Drake's baby mother? Not a prostitute, but same field, respectfully. And before we even get to the cover art, Drake had this whole thing about Taylor Swift making Kendrick wait a whole week before dropping his song, even calling his AI freestyle Taylor Made. This song is Taylor Made for sure because Kendrick's diss is actually produced by somebody who works pretty closely with Taylor Swift, Jack Antonoff. Taylor Swift, low key the rap boogeyman right now. Kidding, I'm kidding. We're not even done with the title of the song, and I'm a minute 45 in. So allegedly, all of these meanings could play a part. And you know Kendrick has quadruple entendres. Drake asked for it in, in the TaylorMade freestyle. He gave it to him. We have OJ Simpson's murder trial, 16th of June. We have Tupac Shakur, born 16th of June. We have Father's Day in Canada, 16th of June. And you know how Kendrick criticized Drake for being a bad father on the last song or not instilling the right morals into his kid. I don't know how many meanings that is, but it's a lot. Then we have the cover art, which also could have like five meanings. You see the Maybach here, the logo. Drake has a Maybach, also Maybach music with Rick Ross, who had been dissing Drake. Also, Michael Jackson's glove is what I think about and who has Drake been comparing himself to in this beef and this song and the back and forth between Kendrick. Also, the OJ thing, glove. Or according to Ninth Wonders tweet, it could mean I... Caucasians and get away with it, like OJ. It could just mean gloves off, okay? Ready to go all the way there in this battle. Let's get into the lyrics. A lot of them are self-explanatory, so I won't go into every single bar, but there are some things to dissect. Off-white sun seeker at the marina, F a phantom, I like to buy yachts when I get the fever. Now, off-white, Virgil's brand that Drake heavily loved, associated with Virgil. He looked up to Virgil. He has Virgil references in his bars. He has a picture with Virgil. He has a statue of Virgil on his stages at his performances. But also sun seeker could mean, if you look at me, if you look at this skin tone, when I go into the sun, not only do I burn, but occasionally I tan. So this could be another way to call Drake a white boy like Rick Ross, like he's been doing in this beef as well. And saying maybe he's just going to look for some tans to get his skin a little darker. But also, Sun Seeker in the sense of, he called out his fatherhood, and we all know that Drake had a bunch of paternity tests to make sure that Adonis was his before going public with it. So Sun Seeker, someone seeking their son. Now, F a phantom, a phantom could be, of course, the car, but it also could be a ghost, as in the ghost writers that uses. And also, Sun Seeker is a luxury yacht company. And I think what Kendrick is doing with these first few bars is basically saying, I have money. We are on the same level. You cannot come at me about money. Take that out of the conversation. And in fact, my luxury is this trifecta, money, morals, and culture. That's my leisure. Basically saying like he referenced in Euphoria saying, I have the culture as well. And I have morals. I can look at myself as a person. So mentions another restaurant in Brooklyn this time because Drake referenced Kendrick being in his Brooklyn apartment. Kendrick is saying, I'm all over the world, but when I do go to Brooklyn, let's give a shout out to another restaurant. Because on Kendrick's last dis euphoria, he boosted the sales of a random Toronto Chinese restaurant by mentioning that he was eating there. So he could be going back to back with that too. Now, another callback to euphoria is when he said, back to back, I like that record. I'm gonna get back to that for the record. He said this, and I said this in the last breakdown. You can go back and watch it. I said, maybe he's coming back to something, of course, referencing the Meek Mill, Drake back to back verse song, but also he might have been saying that he was going to drop back to back before Drake had the chance to respond. And while there were rumors that Drake was going to drop last night, I don't know if they were, if there was any truth to that. I think Kendrick knew this whole time it was going to take Drake a little bit of time to come back and he was going to drop, boom, before Drake could respond back to back. A little taste of his own medicine. 
Now the dope thing about this record, well, there's a lot of dope things about this record, but one thing I personally love is that he talks about God and himself and self-reflection and really his place in life and having peace with who he is as a person. And I think this is supposed to mirror the fact that Drake has a lot of things that he may not be as comfortable with or that he's still struggling with or dealing with. And Kendrick po pokes at that and basically says, listen, I can sleep at night. I can look in the mirror. I've already told you all my faults. You've got a lot of things under the covers, under the rugs that people still haven't talked about that you haven't mentioned, that you haven't dealt with yourself. And we might not even put it in this beef, but you're gonna have to deal with it at the end of the day. Meanwhile, I got my phone off, I'm overseas, I'm sleeping easy. Speaking of, he basically says, listen, I can put my kid to bed, I'm teaching him things, I'm giving prayer, and I can sleep peacefully. And he says, timid soul, stare in the mirror, asking where I was from. Basically saying, I can look in the mirror and that's okay, but you can't. Also, timid soul is a reference. Eva timid soul, I'm a night owl, this is a different mode on Jimmy Cooks. He also mentions Raphael, and art, which could be Raphael, one of the archangels as well, that he mentioned three angels watching over him. And in Family Ties, he also mentions three angels as well. But art, also Raphael, the artist and the architectural designer. Is that, what, is that how you would refer to him? I, 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 don't, I don't know my art as well. He also calls out the whole industry. He says, somebody's lying. I can see the vibes on Ack. Even he looking compromised, let's peel the layers back. DJ Academics has played a big role in this beef. He got Drake's song early. He leaked it. He's been talking to Drake. He's been talking to Joe Budden. He's been talking to WAC 100. Everybody about this beef. And he's been on stream killing it, honestly. But what's funny was Ack's reaction to Euphoria looked like this. Seemed pretty impressed at first. At the very least, it could have been an act, but he seemed impressed by Euphoria, but then immediately after after says, Drake up 1-0. And has been pushing this narrative that Drake is winning the beef, but if you look at all the comments, even his own chat is going against him saying, Drake is up. I think it was like 70% to 30% in his own chat, and there's a lot of Drake fans in the act chat. Myself included sometimes. But there's also a lot of Instagram meme pages, some of them that I love, that if you look at the comments on all the posts where they're trying to say that Drake is winning this battle or downplaying Kendrick's diss, they are not agreeing with those pages. Even the comments that are their fan bases are saying, yo, something's up here. And Kendrick's just calling it out. This isn't the first time that happened. If you remember during Pusha's beef with Drake, there were alleged bots that were putting out random stories about Pusha. And there's a lot more ties to this Pusha beef. Let's get back to it in a second. When he says, have you ever thought that OVO is working for me? If you remember, I did a video on it. There's a theory that potentially Drake owning some of Kendrick's music, but he flips it here and says, no, your people are feeding me information and you put out money on my head, but you got nothing, no information on me because I'm clean, but I got something on you and it's from your own team. If you remember, Pusha also claimed that Drake spent 100K to get dirt on him and he didn't even use it because he didn't put out another song. Apparently he was doing the same to Kendrick and Kendrick's like, you got nothing on me. So all you can do is lie and make up a story. Fables. He said, everyone inside your team is whispering that you deserve it. Can't tussy slide out of this one. It's just gonna resurface. Every dog gonna have its day that live in your purpose. He said, I'm sorry I live a boring life. I love Pete. You got nothing on me. I'm sorry, Drake. I just like to go to sleep at night and hang out with my family. And the thing about Kendrick is he already put his dirt out there with Mr. Morale. He said, yeah, I cheated. That's it. I, pent I repented, I went to therapy, I'm dealing with it. But you on the other hand, 100 dudes on salary and 20 of them want you as a casualty and one of them is actually next to you and two of them are practically tired, tied to your lifestyle. If you remember in the Pusha beef, one of the rumors that Pusha said was that he got the information from a, if you remember in the Pusha beef, Pusha said that 40, Drake's best friend and producer, gave him information through a girl because he was unhappy with his situation with Drake. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but Drake definitely has to look around and ask who in his circle he can trust. He also mentioned Zach Bia and Twitter bots, so they're same thing, basically, forcing the narrative. And Drake has a lot of people that he's had tough relationships with in his own camp. Now this cash doll, cash dog bar was cool. There's conspiracies about cash dog, Abel's manager who actually recently got robbed and there was obviously theories about that. And Drake dissed him on pushups. But also cash doll picture allegedly that caused a breakup between cash doll and her wild picture. But Kendrick's alluding to there being more that he hasn't said. He said, it's not the weekend's manager. That's not even the leak. Find the jewels like cash doll. I just need you to think. He's making Drake think hard about who to trust. And finally, he says, before you figure that you're not alone, ask what Mike would do. One of Michael's biggest songs, Man in the Mirror. And he's basically telling Drake, look at yourself, look at your reflection, think about this. Who can you trust and who are you as a man? Try to keep it under 10 minutes, so let me know what I missed. Let me know what you thought about this diss and what's gonna happen next. As always, I appreciate you guys. See you in the next video. Peace and follow for more.